the lineup for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, which kicks off next month, has been announced. Now, in its 28th year, the festival attracts Australia's most talented comedians as well as many headline acts from overseas. For more on the lineup this year, we're joined by festival director Susan Provan and comedian Frank Woodley, and they are, of course, in Melbourne. A very good morning to I you can't both. Really hear anything. Well, Whoops. that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear Susan? <laughs> I can hear, but I think Frank's got a little problem. Well, uh, I'm, an, maybe I'm a natural. Part of his act, I don't know. I'm a natural. You're a natural. At this, <laughs> Mark, because I can't. You're probably talking now, and I'm probably talking over you. We'll use but I can't hear anything. Sign language, in this. maybe. Okay. We'll try and fix that problem. Let's start uh, with Susan. Uh, yeah, so you, you, can ask me, you can ask me questions to ask him. <laughs> okay. That's a good idea. We might try that. Susan, let's set up this uh, the, the festival. Uh, what can what can the uh, the people that are attending expect? Um, well, they can expect sort of uh, 478 different shows this year. A huge festive atmosphere, lots of shows, stuff on TV. <laughs> um, Frank, I'm, I'm being just... able to hear things and see things. Um, I thought I was, I didn't realise I'm actually like a, I'm actually a fool. I thought I was just pretending to be a fool for other people's entertainment. But as it turns out, I am actual, actually one. Because this is, I'm just naturally, I'm not even trying. And is it's he, still, is he still not oh hearing? hang on, there's oh, something. You, you can hear uh, me, can you? Are, are you speaking in Mandarin? Uh, ni hao. No. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. Anyhow, um, I can hear you very cool. vaguely. I must admit now. So, what, what is there anything you'd like me to answer? <laughs> well, I was going to ask whether it's easy to be funny at this hour of the morning. Well, clearly it is for me. If you're genetically a buff head. Um, oh look, it's not. Uh, there are. I tell you what. There are lots of um, comedians who do breakfast radio, which is they have to get up at like you know four or five in the morning and be funny and I think that would I couldn't quite do that but no this is quite leisurely and lovely it's nice to be here all right well let's talk about the festival and uh, we were, I was asking you about what's expected uh, any new faces that we should look out for definitely people like Luke McGregor Celia Bacola lots of new people coming from overseas including Milton Jones it's going to be his debut Australian uh, season uh, lots. I always encourage people, it's such a huge program that you should just take a punt, just plunge into the program, choose, choose five young Australian performers that you've never heard of and go and see them because tickets are not expensive and you might discover someone that you know, is on the verge of becoming hugely famous and you can say you saw their first gigs. And I'm booked in next Wednesday um, for a, a, a procedure so I'm going to have a new face as well. Because um, you know, lots of actors and models, uh, they get plastic surgery to make themselves look uh, more beautiful because that's part of their job and I was thinking well I should make myself look a bit funnier so I'm gonna I'm getting something like this maybe and a bit of and a few extra double chins added on so oh, I'm gonna have a new face even as an old face we can't wait for that one but uh, there's something I've always wanted to know and I'd love to hear from both of you it's pretty easy to discern people who are kind of born funny but is comedy something that can be taught absolutely to a certain extent and we do workshops for kids we've got a really big schools program called class clowns and um, deadly funny kids for indigenous kids who want it, who are wanting to learn comedy but I think you've got to you've really got to be born with funny bones and then just practice in front of an audience but Frank knows more about that than me well lots of people will say you know with comedians were you always did you always feel like you know were you always the class clown and I know certainly in my case um, that wasn't true. I was the, the class trapeze artist, which um, required a lot more logistical pre preparation. You know, I had to get into the class maybe an hour or two beforehand. Um, but I didn't think it was going to be comedy for me. I thought it was going to be more like hanging on things. <laughs> Frank, uh, is it easier to perform at a live, in front of a live audience or perhaps TV? Do you, do you enjoy that interaction with, uh, with the audience, which is not necessarily going to be a good thing? Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always going to have well, the hecklers, aren't you? <laughs> um, there's absolutely nothing like performing to a live audience. You know, you have to be... Uh, I think it's a bit like surfing or, you know, some sort of extreme, you know, downhill skiing or something. You just have to be so alert. And every single moment is adjusted based on the reaction that you just got. You know, so you have to be completely present for an hour. And, and I think that's why... 
Um, some, some forms of, uh, of live entertainment um, can almost be as enjoyable if you, if you see them on a screen or, or a recording of music. But I mean, I guess live music is, is very, very different as well. But comedy is so different live because of that, that atmosphere, you know. And um, that's why I, I've been trying out a bunch of, of the jokes that I'm going to be doing in the comedy festival the last few weeks in front of live audiences to see what, how, how they will react. I did, I did a show uh, last night actually where I did, I did an hour and unfortunately the audience only laughed at one joke. Um, but they found it so funny they laughed for 55 minutes. So I've just got to find another five minutes and then the show will be ready. Before we let you go, Susan, this event has been going for 28 years. Everybody knows that they're going to expect something funny. It's a comedy festival. But how do you keep something like this fresh and interesting to an audience? There are always new people coming up, always new performers wanting to have a go and wanting to become comedians and work up new shows. There's a whole world of comedy out there. From you know, We bring in people from North America and uh, the UK. So there's always fresh and exciting stuff that audiences in Melbourne and in Australia have not seen yet. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a continual exploration. And, and the reality of comedy is that, and because this is some, something that I've, I've found ab absolutely, that you can't become stale as a performer because as soon as you do, the audience stop laughing. So you have to, it's still as scary for me now as it was, you know, 25 years ago when I started because um, I have to find a way to make it fresh yeah. every single time or the audience uh, stop, stop laughing, you know. It's a, it's a real, um, there's a trick in comedy somehow, like a special mystery where it always has to be fresh every, every year for, for every performer. Yeah. If the audience is, if it's working for the audiences, it is fresh. Yeah. And the world's sense. changing all the time. There's always new stuff to talk about. It is, a, it is by its very nature, a fresh and contemporary performing form.